I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Wow. Good morning. Happy Easter. Would you just look at this place? <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who came out yesterday and decorated the church. It is just beautiful, right? And it's so good to see all of you here, a full packed house, and a big welcome if you're joining us online as well. Well, for all of you uh, that gave up something for Lent, you made it. It's finally Easter, so eat that chocolate. Have that glass of wine, whatever it takes. This is a true feast day, okay? I love feast days. I love feast days. What a fun day. If you didn't see it, about two minutes, it took two minutes for all those Easter eggs to be gone, right? That'll put a smile on your face. And I realized something this week. Easter egg hunts are just proof that your children really can find things when they really want to. <laughs> they can. There's truth to that. So did you hear the gospel question that the angels asked the women today? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Easter is certainly all about new life, new creation, but there is also this sense in our stories about Easter that this is not what they expected. This was not the same old, same old. I mean, the women were going to the tomb fully expecting to attend to the dead body of Jesus. They weren't expecting that the body would be gone. Then they go and they tell the disciples and other and Peter, they all dismiss the story. They say it's an idle tale, right? They're not expecting this either. No one saw it coming. This new life, this new creation, this was extremely surprising for all of them. You see, many of the Jews did believe in the resurrection, but it wasn't a person-by-person -person basis resurrection. Rather, they believed in a general resurrection of all the just on the last day. So you see, resurrection of one person before the end time didn't make sense in the context of their belief. That is why this was so surprising to them. The new creation promised that the end of time actually was beginning simultaneously as they were living their old lives. So do you get it? We have old creation and new creation continuing now. So just hang, me, hang with me for a second, okay? Because Easter is bigger. It's bigger than I can comprehend. <laughs> I mean, I think we're all sort of still working resurrection out. But I did some reading something this week, and it helped me. You see, our Easter story today can be seen as a sort of bookend to what happens in the creation story of Genesis. You know, Genesis is six days of creation, right? So God makes the world in six days. According to the Jewish days of the week, the sixth day of the week is Friday. So all the work is done by Friday. So in our story, all Jesus' work was done by Good Friday. Then according to Genesis, we have the Sabbath a day of rest. So for us, that was yesterday, Holy Saturday. And that completes a week for the Jewish calendar. But for us Christians, we believe that there is an eighth day of the week. <laughs> there is an eighth day of the week because Jesus was raised on the first day of a new week, or as the gospel today begins, on the first day of the week. Jesus Christ is the new creation. Jesus Christ is the new creation. But that was why it was so surprising to all the women, the disciples. This was a completely new thing. And that's why we're all here today. <laughs> new life, new creation. And it's not just about the new life after this mortal life. That is certainly a great comfort for all those who we see no longer. But Easter also celebrates all of our new lives. All of the little deaths that we have, they're transformed into new life. And we see it all the time. It is the grand pattern of existence. See, I know I can't comprehend all that is happening within the cosmic Easter. But if I slow down and look at my own life, I experience that Easter is happening all around us all the time. We just got to be open to it, be aware. So I'll show you how this plays out for me. Our youngest son just turned 10 last month. 
And so we are acutely aware of these being the last days of having little kids. <laughs> and so when I watch my youngest son doing things, sometimes I realize this is maybe the last time he ever does this. You know, I'm cognizant of that. He's growing up. The old creation is here in front of me, but something new is being born right in front of me at the same time. <laughs> but there's some sadness in not having a bunch of little boys anymore, right? Not because they're getting close to those teenage years that are so fun, but those years of babies and of toddlers, they're over for us. And now our baby boy is not a baby, and there's some Good Friday in that for me. <laughs> there's a lot of Good Friday in that for me, right? But the Easter, the Easter I see in my son is so beautiful. <laughs> He's becoming something so new and so surprising. His mind is taking so much in. He's putting things together and understanding more and more. He is, and at the same time, becoming the person that God created him to be. Always growing, always evolving. The old creation with the new creation. Always moving from old life into new life. So I see in my children Easter. <laughs> And when I see that, that helps me to start seeing Easter everywhere, okay? In my former life as a bartender and now as a priest, <laughs> they laughed at the earlier service too. It really wasn't supposed to be funny, but anyway. <laughs> I've seen so many people in the throes of addiction because of those jobs. I've seen so many friends, by the grace of God, find recovery. In recovery... There is Easter. See, you can start seeing it everywhere. You can start seeing it. Or even the, in the miscellaneous things of life. For instance, yesterday I had the pleasure of listening to a live band. And they were playing French gypsy swing jazz. Okay? Now, I was ignorant of this genre uh, of music, but I was told the story yesterday of the guy who created it. His name was Django Reinhardt. Anybody ever hear this guy? Yeah, I know some of you have. So the story I was told is that he was a real gypsy, living the way gypsies lived at the end of World War I, and there was like a fire in his wagon home, and two of his fingers were paralyzed. <laughs> so he learned to play the guitar with just two fingers on the frets. You get it? Just two, not four, just two. A new creation, maybe. Because as he created this whole new genre of music, the musicians that now learn to play that kind of music nowadays, they all learn how to play the guitar with just two fingers. Two fingers. Maybe later on they add the others. It's another new creation, y'all. <laughs> it's all around us. The message of Easter is that God wills life for all of us. <laughs> We worship the God of life, of love, always and forever. We are given new life over and over and over again. God created you for life. God created all of you for life. So pay attention today. Pay attention. Easter is an everyday occurrence happening all around us and everyone you meet. We are all old creations giving way to new creations. Easter, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. You all have a new life that you can start today. You all have endless possibilities. You all have Easter. So enjoy today. <laughs> Feast today. Celebrate today. Happy Easter, y'all.